Welcome to Alphabet City. This is the show that covers everything related to Alphabet Inc. Alphabet happens to own all kinds of companies, including Google, X, Loon, Wing, and the Phoenix Suns. Okay, not the Suns. I'm your guide, Ayaz Akhtar, and you are the outstanding audience. Today, we're talking about more Android phones, Waymo in China, and a boatload of stuff on Assistant. But our top story is something we never, ever have discussed on this show before. The Google Pixel 3 is leaked. Again? Yeah, again. First stop, Pixel Park. For the first time ever, it seems like the Pixel 3 XL leaked. Amazing, right? Over on YouTube, a user by the name of Indigi posted an unboxing video showing off what looks to be a white Pixel 3 XL. The rear of the phone has a kind of two-tone look with a shiny top and a matte bottom. In the box are also a pair of wired USB-C headphones, a headphone adapter, a USB-C to A adapter, and a plug to charge the phone. In the video, the phone is turned on. It shows a date of Friday, July 6th, but the video was published on August 24th. Oh, but there's more. Noted leaker Elder Mertazin published photos of his unboxing of the Pixel 3 XL at mobilereview.com. He says he has a prototype version meant for developers, which was sent to him by an anonymous person. Mertazin also posted pictures of the Pixel next to the Huawei P20 Pro and the Note 9 so you can get a better sense of scale. He says the Pixel 3 XL has a 6.2 inch OLED screen, which could be a little brighter. In his post, Mertazin also mentions that Google is developing seven smartphones. Here's the breakdown. Two of them are the third gen Pixel. One has a flexible screen, which may arrive in the year 2020, and four other models seem to be updated Pixels. He says that by October, two of those four should be ready. So when will the Pixel be officially unveiled? A Bloomberg report says Google will hold a media event on October 9th in New York City. This conflicts with a previous report that said Pixel Day would be October 4th. By the way, some of you in the audience have suggested that maybe, maybe Google is trying to swerve us. The amount of leaks we've seen is kind of ridiculous. Maybe this is all a deliberate misdirection. I really hope so, because that notch on the top with that little alien slash robot face is just silly. Over to Android Avenue. Xiaomi unveiled the Poco Phone F1. Here are the specs. Snapdragon 845 processor, dual rear cameras, 20 megapixel front facing camera, 6.18 inch screen, and a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. It starts at $300. That's right, 300. There are some trade-offs for that price. It's got a plastic body, the screen is 1080 resolution, no wireless charging, or any notable water resistance. But it's 300 bucks, what'd you expect? The Poco phone is not expected to hit the US, but it is headed to India. In some news you probably don't care about, there are more details about the Red Hydrogen One phone. That's the phone with what Red calls a holographic screen. The Alphabet citizens have made it known that they are not impressed by this and they think it's just like the Nintendo 3DS. Beginning August 31st, Red will give the Houdini developers model to a number of pre-order customers. Then on October 9th, which may or may not be Pixel Day, more Red Hydrogen One devices will ship. Then on November 2nd, you'll find the Red Hydrogen One in wireless carrier stores. It will cost just $1,295. Let's go to Assistant Alley. Bang & Olufsen announced that its Biosound 1 and Biosound 2 speakers will include Google Assistant. You can get the Biosound 1 beginning in September for $1,750. It's battery powered. If you want a dock, it'll cost you an extra $175. The Biosound 2, which stays plugged in, costs $2,250. The two arrives in October. Some quick math. You could buy 45 Google Home Minis for the price of one Biosound 2. But look at the Biosound. It's so pretty. Are you going to buy one of these things? Let me know in the comments. Google is also testing out a new feature in Assistant. You can ask it, tell me something good. And then Assistant will give you a two to three sentence summary about good news, like solving social problems, education, and other positive stories. Google says tell me something good is an experimental feature for the US. LG is building in Google Assistant to its LG Tone Portable Audio products. They will also have real-time translation abilities using Google Translate. The Tone devices have a dedicated assistant button, so you don't have to use the wake word all the time. There's a new Google Smart Display. Say hello to the JBL Link View. It uses the same software as the Lenovo Smart Display. CNET's Andrew Gebhardt says the $250 JBL Link View sounds great playing music. But oddly, you can't adjust the EQ settings yet. If you're wondering where you would need a smart display like the Link View, 
Andrew says it works best as a kitchen assistant thanks to a great guided recipe system. One more piece of Google Assistant news. The product page for the JBL Link Bar is now up at B&H Photo. $400 will get you a 100 watt soundbar, which also has Android TV and Assistant built in. It also has Chromecast built in and can operate as a Bluetooth speaker as well. Pre-orders start in October. Time for a little stop over at Waymo Way. China Money Network reports that Waymo has set up a subsidiary in China. The company is called the Humio, Humo Business Consulting. I'm probably butchering the name. I probably sound something like Waymo. This business handles autonomous driving parts, business consulting, and supply chain consulting. Waymo is listed as a shareholder in the company. China Money Network cited China's National Enterprise Credit Information Publicity System as its source. On to Comment Cove. This is the part of the show where we shine a spotlight on the most amazing audience in the world, you guys. Last time, we talked about Google tracking your location even with location history turned off. To completely stop tracking, you'd have to turn off web and app activity. Louis B says, but if I turn off web and app activity, my assistant doesn't work. Three crying emoji faces. Yeah, that stinks, doesn't it? Josh asks, can you buy me a pizza? I don't know, maybe. Maddie missed the awesomeness says, this is a comment that will be read in the next video. Nope. And Joku said, duh. Well stated, Joku. So very well stated. Thanks to everyone for writing in. If you've enjoyed your stay in Alphabet City, please like and subscribe. By the way, I know some of the news we cover seems dated since we're weekly, but that's kind of the nature of a weekly show. If you want your news ASAP, I highly suggest trying out CNN's 359 podcast. You can find it almost everywhere podcasts are available. Anyway, I'm Aya Zaktar, and I'll see you online. It's time for shoutouts, but I seem to have forgotten my magic mirror. Hello to Alexander, Catalina, sports subscriber, Eldho, and Herbal. And one last bit of news. Google updated the Gmail app for Android. It now has an undo send button. This is the greatest thing ever. For like a little thing. <laughs>